Hello, very good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night throughout the globe, wherever you are. I'm Rizwan Akram here in Connecting the World Show. And today we have very special guest from Sweden as we are connecting the people from Pakistan to all around the globe. So Usama Athar with us. Usama is an NLP trainer, a teacher, neuralistic programming. And uh, he has done something amazing with mind sciences as well. So, Osama, welcome to Connecting the World Show. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me here. Osama, would you like to explain about your previous education? Like NLP is a field now, but two years ago, we haven't listened about it. Before that, people usually get their formal education. So, would you like to share about your formal experience of education? Uh, of course, sure. Uh, so uh, I studied at the University uh, French Literature, actually, uh, and there was yeah, there was some similarity actually to uh, to what I studied afterward, which is neuro linguistic programming, because uh, neuro linguistic programming is all about uh, language, which is you know the linguistic part of it. Uh, so in in my study in the university, uh, we had also linguistics, which is you know the science of language. Uh, so it's it's really it's basically how do we uh, how do we use language and how do we understand language and how do we use it in our communication? Uh, how does it affect our thinking, our thoughts, and our behavior? So I got really fascinated about that subject and uh, studied on with. Uh, neuro linguistic programming. Osama, would you like to share about NLP? Like it's so much spoken nowadays. Every person is saying about mind sciences, mindfulness, neuralistic programming, or Reiki, or a lot of things are there. So, would you like to share what actually NLP is? Absolutely, sure. Um, it's uh, well, it's not really. You know, it's not really an easy task to 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 be able to uh, identify what is NLP because it, it's just like you know saying uh, what is physics and what is mathematics. It's really it's really you know it depends really on which uh, uh, how how do you want to uh, define it and what is your point of view. Um, I can say that neuro linguistic programming is a relatively new science that uh, studies the mind. How do we think? Uh, and our thought patterns. Uh, how do we how do we feel, and why do we feel the way we feel, and how does that affect our behavior, our habits, and our personality in in general? Um, as I said, it's a it's a recent science. It's based on many new discoveries, uh, which are which the co-founders of uh, the, the the science of NLP uh, made in. You know, in the early 70s, they started, you know, 72, 73, they started uh, modeling uh, uh, three therapists in America, one of the most successful therapists in America, psychologists. Uh, so they came up with um, a set of language patterns that which which was the, fir the very first uh, book and very first model in NLP, which is the linguistic model or the meta model, as we call it. Uh, so they basically took, you know, uh, by co by co consequence of modeling these people, they took their speech pattern. How do they speak and what kind of questions they ask their clients? And they came up with, uh, you know, they, they just took the common denominators of all these three people. And they came up with a set of questions, a set of uh, thinking patterns, if you will, uh, that would somehow make them more efficient than other people and get them the results that they want to, to have faster than everybody else. And and this is how NLP began. And it wasn't even called NLP. Uh, so they they started noticing much more things and they started, you know, adding to their techniques. And they in the end it's a whole, you know, body of uh, knowledge right now. There are many books, there are many techniques and you know, it just, you know, a whole structure of a whole science. So it's really fascinating. And it's basically, uh, it's built on the idea that uh, our thoughts and our 
uh, feelings affect our behavior. And these three things, you know, the thoughts, the feelings, and the behavior, they're all very, very interconnected. So basically, if you change one of those, this the the other two are are meant to change. They will change. It's it's it, and this is this this principle comes from uh, a science called cybernetics, uh, w which says that you know in a system, if you change a part of the system, the other parts will also change. So basically, if you want to change some kind of behavior, if you want to change any part of that system, you know the the thoughts, the feeling, and the behavior. You need to change one or you know more than of the other two parts. So that's very very a general uh, idea about NLP. But as I said, it's it's really hard to you know to to just put it in words in a couple of minutes or in five minutes. So it really depends on how do you want to see it. And you know it's it's a science about science also about communication, about therapy, about um, uh, self uh, development. It's very, very, uh, it's very global, and it, and it goes into all the domains in life because it really treats the person itself. How do we think? What do we think? And so forth. Osama, if I ask you, like, what things that inspire you to learn about NLP? Well, um, I actually started NLP by coincidence. <laughs> I was actually working with the, as we said before, we, we started Go Live. Uh, I was working with GIZ actually, and they had a continuous uh, training for their staff, which I was one of them. So one of the trainings was uh, NLP. So I had no idea what was that um, before I did the training. So I was really curious what 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 what, what is it was it. So I googled it and I just you know I just typed NLP and uh, neuro linguistic programming. And it turned out to be something about, you know, communication, self-improvement and stuff like that, which I had zero idea about. So I was much more curious to know uh, more about it. And I registered for the course. And when I did the course, I found out what it was. And, and I got really, really passionate about it. And it, it has uh, changed my life in, in, in all possible ways that we can think of. Osama, uh, your communication uh, suggests me that like is think and grow rich. Uh, excuse me, I didn't hear you. Uh, it 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 is same like the phenomena that is uh, Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich. Is it the practical right. example of NLP? Well, uh, yeah, because uh, our behavior, as I said, is, is just a consequence of our thinking patterns and our feeling patterns. So, uh, of course, the idea is that if you want to achieve success, if you want to achieve what you want in life, you need to have uh, the same mindset. You need to have the mindset of a successful person. and You have to uh, change your habits in a way that it's, uh, appropriate for your goal. So you need to be on the same level of your thinking and on the habits and behavior that you want. Uh, so, so basically, yeah, I mean, uh, if you, if you simply change your, 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 uh, thinking patterns, and if you change your behaviors and your habits, uh, you can become whatever you want, basically. Uh, Osama, if I ask you, like, what sort of people comes to you as you are a trainer or a practitioner? So we know that people who come to doctor, they are ill. People who go to psychologists, they have some sort of mental uh, uh, mind issues. But how the people comes to you for NLP? Uh, well, you have two types of people. Uh, there are people who actually know what NLP is and they want to learn about it they want to know more about it and this is basically nlp training so i train them in nlp simply uh, and there are people who have uh, issues in their life um, it might be you know uh, some some kind of thoughts that that give them hardship it could be you know uh, goals that they want to achieve in their life and they they have something that is stopping them um, uh, they, they might have even, you know, psychological issues. Um, they might have uh, bad habits, for example, uh, addictions. Um, then, you know, 
the, the array, I mean, I mean, it's a, it's a wide, wide array. You know, any any kind of uh, any kind of situation where the mind gets in the way, simply, you know. Uh, so these people doesn't have really to to know about NLP or what NLP is. I actually use NLP to help them. So I don't really explain what is NLP to them. I just you know use it. I use the techniques. I use the mindset and everything to to help these people. And that is coaching. You know that's that is you know life coaching or you know NLP coaching. So I really help people, coach them to get what they want in life and you know uh, overcome the obstacles that they have in their minds and, and in their behaviors and you know in nlp we have a lot to do with the separation between the conscious mind and the unconscious mind and that is very very important in nlp because uh, we understand how the mind functions and how what is what are the differences between the conscious mind and the unconscious mind and their type of thinking and their type of uh, information processing. So uh, in NLP, there's a lot of um, information about that. There's a lot of books about that and how how do you treat, uh, you know, uh, issues, mental illnesses or bad habits or whatever uh, in the unconscious mind. Because, you know, the unconscious mind is way more powerful than the, the conscious mind. And it, it really is the the center of change. You know, if you want to change someone, it has to have some kind of level uh, in treating the unconscious mind. Uh, so this is how we, how we, you know, uh, how we understand humans, how we understand the behavior, the mind, how does it work and stuff like that. And we use that in coaching the people. And we, of course, if you want to train people in NLP, so you have to explain these things in very, very much detailed way. Osama, we have learned that our unconscious mind or subconscious mind has been developed up to the age of eight or seven. So how we can change our minds or our behaviors after that age and how you can do a rewiring of brain after such a mature age? Well, uh, let's say that the, 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 the unconscious mind would, um, would be ruling until the age of maybe five or six uh, years. And then the, the conscious mind starts to, you know, to, to, to develop and starts to uh, uh, form in, in, in a sense. And it, becomes from, it comes from the, uh, the repetition of patterns, from learning, from when the child is modeling or imitating their parents or the people or surrounding them. Um, this, that age, you know, between the age of uh, zero to six or seven or so, or so, that is a very important age uh, because at that time, uh, uh, people will be, will be gaining their, well, you can say their basic skills and their basic habits. Uh, so it's 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 really important at that age uh, what we how do we treat ba uh, the, the the children how do how do we teach them you know the, the basic things in life uh, of course that doesn't mean that you know the things that you learn at that age cannot be um, changed no absolutely not because you can actually you can influence the unconscious mind. You can change the patterns in the, the the unconscious mind even even after forty or fifty or or whatever. You know, age doesn't matter for the unconscious mind. Uh, so uh, so it's it's really uh, it's really a matter of uh, understanding how the mind works and how the unconscious mind works and how can we influence uh, the unconscious mind. And uh, in in that sense, yeah, you can you can you can understand. Uh, how can you change, for example, habits? How can you change things at the unconscious level? I hope I answered your question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got something like I'm not a person with mind sciences, so I have got a little bit too. I would like to ask that if someone is asking you how this NLP has brought changes in your life and what are the benefits of learning NLP, what would you suggest? Um, well, I can say first and foremost, NLP has changed my mindset 
uh, has changed the way I understand people and the way I understand communication. So it's really got my mind in the right direction. Uh, you know, the, the, the creator, one of the creators of NLP, Dr. Richard Bandler, says that NLP is a mindset and an attitude towards life. So it, it's really, you know, when you, when you have the right attitude and the, and, and the right mindset, uh, it, and the positive one, of course, uh, you, really, you really change your life in, in, in ways that you, you weren't even, you know, thinking about. You, know, you, you won't even, you don't believe that they're even possible. Uh, so, you know, the, the importance of communication in life is, is huge. So you really, you really can't get anything. You can't get to, to your goals, uh, you know, without communication. Because, you know, we are, we, as, as a human race, we are a collective hu human beings. You know, we, 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 have, we, we live in societies. We don't live by, we don't live by ourselves. So uh, communication is essential to our success, uh, because, in, 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 and of course, when I say communication, I'm not just talking about you know external communication. I'm all I'm always I'm also talking about internal communication. Is how do you how do you deal with yourself? How do you talk to yourself? How do you communicate ideas with yourself? That is also very very important and essential for you know the 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 success of people. So uh, in, in, in these terms, NLP uh, really um, helped me a lot in um, refining my, uh, my attitude, my positive attitude. You know, actually, I was, I was really positive, you know, most of my life. It, it's something that I was fortunate to have, you know, have this like this positive mindset uh, even before I learned NLP. So I learned NLP and I loved it even more. Because it's actually, uh, it's actually, uh, I, I understood more how important it is to have a positive mindset, in you know, scientifically speaking, and why is it uh, essential to to uh, to a person's success. Uh, so, and of course, you know, um, I changed many of the th of the thinking patterns that I used to have, which were not very useful, and which which would would be uh, somehow which would prevent me from being as you know as successful as I wanted to be. Uh, so most mostly this is what NLP does. I think which is the most most important thing is is to have this uh, change at the unconscious level, uh, but you do it consciously, you know, because most people you know everybody change. Everybody is changing. Uh, all the time but the thing is that we don't understand that that change is unconscious so when you understand how change work and you, and you when you understand how to how to do it consciously uh, you start to really take control of your life and take control of your mind and when you take control of your life and your mind this is when you start to go in the right direction towards what you want in life and towards your goals so this is basically how NLP helped me. Osama, that looks quite uh, wonderful and definitely inspiring as well. You take control of your mind every day and you start thinking that I will do something like this and I will follow my plan. I will do my timetable. I will make my time management plan or all about that. Then a sudden incident happened to you. Something happened that is not in your plan and it shatters all your peace of mind and definitely all your planning. And suddenly you broke up in pieces. How you can collect yourself again and rejoin again and reboost yourself? Well, uh, it's very simple. You know, it's, uh, you know, understanding this is that it's just simply a part of life. You know, you can have exactly as you said, you can have a plan, you can have it really, really specific and uh, uh, positive and specified and everything. And then something go goes along and it's just, you know, goes, uh, you know, goes uh, uh, as not, not as planned, which is perfectly okay. This is life. Uh, you know, one of the things about success is, is not really, um, you know, it's not really avoiding failure is 
knowing how to treat failure or what we call fail, play, uh, failure. There's no such thing as, uh, in NLP, there's no such thing as failure. There's only feedback. And which means that whatever happens in life, you can, you can, you know, you can uh, see it in two ways. It's either a problem or a possibility, you know? So whatever happens in life, uh, you can take it as a lesson. Well, okay, this happened, so this, this happened to my planning. Great, which means that now you have a way to avoid what happened in the future, you know? So when, when you say, well, yeah, I did, I did this and I did that and I had this plan and then this happened and this wrecked my plan and just destroyed everything that I did, that is a, a negative mindset, you know? And this is what NLP help you with is to have always a positive mindset is to have this mental toughness, you know, is to have this mental flexibility uh, is to understand that, you know, life is, is never expected. You can never expect the, fu the future. All you can do is to have the right flexibility, the right mindset to be able to treat whatever happens in the future. Uh, and this is really the um, uh, this is really what what makes you successful is to be to have the flexibility and to be able to to uh, to uh, to treat any any kind of situation uh, with a with a very you know with a congruent with a with a calm mind that will get you through whatever happens and to understand that this is simply a part of life you know you know uh, problems happen when when you well, since birth, you know, well, the the essential cause of problems is birth. <laughs> you know, when you when you're when you're born, that's it. You know, you you are prone to 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 problems. Problems are going to happen to you wh wherever you go. So the idea is never to see problems as the you know the 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 end point of your project. You have to see them as a step. You know, you have to see them as just a station in your journey towards your goal and as a part as an important part of your journey you know because uh, my belief is nothing happens by coincidence you know everything has a reason everything has uh, a purpose in your life so you have to you need to accept whatever happens and go on towards your goal and have the flexibility to change your planning you know according to whatever happens in life Osama, if I ask you that how a person, a normal person can learn NLP and uh, what time required to learn NLP to give a positive direction in life? Uh, well, any, any normal people, any normal human being can, can, uh, can study NLP because I am a normal people and I studied NLP. <laughs> uh, so the thing is, um, this is very relative to people, you know, every... Every person has their own mindset, has their own uh, patterns of thinking and behavior and habits. Uh, so the thing is, um, when you start learning NLP, you get this huge amount of information going through your mind. At least as, this is what happened to me. You know, I, I read many books. I, I watched many courses. And I did courses myself. Uh, so it's kind, of a, uh, it's kind of a process as well. You know, I, I saw many people, some people even did courses uh, when I was also a student of NLP. I said, well, yeah, I tried NLP and it didn't work. You know, NLP is not like an ice cream flavor that, that you try, you know, for, for once. And yeah, that didn't work for me. It's also, you know, you know progress and development is a process. And as we said, if, if, we, if we think about how much time we have spent living in the same mindset and the same habits and the same uh, thinking patterns, uh, it will not change, you know, uh, overnight. It will not, it, it, it requires time. It requires time and it, it requires uh, motivation and perseverance. So this is what we have to have in our mind that it's a, it's a learning process and the learning process will never stop. You know, I've, I started learning NLP in 2010. That's exactly 10 years ago. So um, even today, uh, I know that I, I just, you know, I'm just, you know, just starting. I'm just in the beginning. 
I just need much more information. I need more skills because it, it's, it, it'll never stop. You know, people change and they change constantly. So learning NLP is not something that you do for, you know, just to take the certificate and put it on your wall and say, well, now I'm, I am a trainer of NLP or NLP practitioner or coach or whatever. It is something that you should do. And the co-creator of NLP, Dr. John Grinder, the one who certified, I, I got certified uh, through him. Uh, he said something that um, uh, the most important thing about NLP is to, uh, is to do uh, self-application. You know, when you, when you study something, when you, when you study a new technique, for example, you need to, 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 to apply it on yourself first in order to be able to apply it to other people. Otherwise, it will be very, very difficult for you to understand the change process. You know, to, to, if, you, if you undergo the change process itself, then it will be much more easy to, you know, to inflict that change on other people. Uh, so th that is that is an, an um, uh, that is an advice that I give to everybody who wants to be you know educated in NLP, who want to use NLP on other people, who want to to uh, to be trainers or whatever. The most important thing is to have this what we call congruency, is to be able to uh, have the experience of the of the conscious change when you want to do it. And that would give you the the uh, the right skills to be able to change other people and to help other other people to achieve their their goals and what they want in life, uh, whether it is learning NLP or or anything else. So if you let's say if you if you want to teach piano, um, how can you teach piano if you don't know how to play the piano yourself? I mean, <laughs> theoretically, theoretically. Uh, you can tell someone else, well, if you want to learn the piano, you have to do this and that, and you have to learn the notes and whatever, uh, which theoretically can, could work. But you have to compare two people, you know, an expert in, uh, in piano who plays actually the piano and someone who, who is theoretically very, very knowledgeable in piano. You know, knowledge itself is very important, but it's not enough. Knowledge has to be combined with experience, with physical experience, I mean. And this is what really gives you, uh, you know, the whole experience. When you have the, the, the knowledge and you have also the life experience of that knowledge, I think this is what, what makes, makes the difference, you know, between a good uh, practitioner of NLP and a normal practitioner of NLP, if I may say. Osama, thank you so much. You have given me plenty of time. It was really worth listening to you. Thank and you definitely much. the things you have told about NLP, it's uh, wonderful for all the people who don't know about it. And uh, people love to learn it, definitely, through might be different sources. And they are expecting some books from you. And if you have any uh, YouTube channel, I would love to suggest to you that please mention in the comments so the people can learn from you. People can know more about it. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you very much for inviting me. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Have a very best of day and beautiful luck as well. Thank you. Bye.